we're at the Gramercy Theater uh, for the Metal Masters 4. We're just a bunch of friends having a good time, man. It's like, it's fun, you know? There's no egos, there's no issues. You just pretty much go up there and play songs we all dig. I'm, I'm trying not to f them up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, because I feel obviously really strongly about playing the stuff right. You know, like I, I sat in my house and like, Really worked on five minutes alone. Like I was I like, I, a lot, I can't even walk in that place unless like I have this down. You know, I, I don't want to embarrass myself or Pantera. You know. <laughs> yeah, that middle riff that happens eight times in yeah. a row, but it's three different versions. Yeah, that was that took me a while. I started working on five minutes probably two weeks ago, and I worked on it for three days. You know, just getting the, first getting the sequence and then getting it correct. I didn't know about the SOD stuff till just a couple of days ago. I, there's no, I wish, you know, I'm watching you play and I'm like, man, I'm not going to get the sequence in time to pull that off. Yeah, I haven't played those songs in 11 years. It comes back quick, but it was just kind of like, oh, really? We're doing that? Okay, I just had to I love get SOD, my mind man. I'd, I'd love to be playing SOD songs. Next time. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, it. Dime was just uh, crazy. Nicest guy in the world, but... Not afraid to do anything. <laughs> He's one of the few people on the planet that I've ever seen who were able to, who was able to drink the way he drank, starting at like five in the afternoon, and then get on stage around nine nine thirty and still just rip it up. Like, yeah, he, it just made him loose. Yeah, it was, you know, it got him in the vibe to play. And you know, with touring with those guys, you know, it was always kind of hard to avoid that. A lot of the, a lot of my normal rules went out the window when I play yeah. shows with those guys. So. I would always try and keep it to a minimum. I'm like, all right, I'm not doing more than three shots with you, you know, before I play. But then they're walking on stage and they're handing you drinks while in the middle of, you know, a set, or they're pouring them down your throat. Or so by the time you get off stage when you're touring with those guys, I was generally drunk, and then I would have the next, you know, two and a half hours of their set, and then, you know, it was just I, I could say any time I've toured with those guys is the drunkest I've ever been in my life. I do remember a night in New York one time with randomly it was like I can't remember I feel like it was me and Frankie Vinnie Paul Daryl Tommy Lee and Gene Simmons somehow all ended up together at That's scores quite a party. and we were in some private room at scores and for three or four hours I was sitting next to Dime a stripper on my lap constantly you know for three three or four hours non-stop I mean there never wasn't a girl dancing for me and uh, a drink in my hand, always someone just refilling it or handing me another drink. And at the end of the night, we left. And I remember saying to somebody, who paid for it? Like, what did we do? Who paid? Right? Just left. And I saw the next day in the New York Post, there was a story on the entertainment page about Tommy Lee uh, last night with his friends at, at Scores and dropped like 28 grand or something. Jesus. So I guess I owe Tommy a thank you. <laughs> Tommy's a good dude. Yeah. I've never been arrested. Somehow. <laughs> I was arrested once for stu my stupid Yankee prank years ago. I broke into Legends Field in Tampa and ran the bases. I was actually drinking with Zach that day. We were at this guitar show. So all, all stories have to yeah. do with Zach and Dime. All stories. Drank all day like with him at this guitar show and then later that night with my buddy, I was out of my mind drunk and decided at like four in the morning I had to hop the fence and go in there to see the Thurman Munson monument and it ended badly. I mean I went to jail and the end end of the story was I, I went on Howard Stern and got to personally apologize to George Steinbrenner who owned the Yankees then and, and uh, they ended up dropping all the charges. That's cool. We started this thing on the last mayhem and I don't, it was my genius that did it. I had a, like our, our second day off, we had a day off in Vegas going passing through and if I'm telling the story correctly where they did shots at 8.15. So I'm like, man, you can't tell me that. Now I gotta have one. You know, so I said, we're doing it 9.28 tomorrow, just in passing, and everybody remembered. And it was a daily thing. And it, got, it got to the point where we would go through two bottles at the 9.28 shot. And by the end of the night, it was like six at the end of the tour. Six Jaeger bottles down. And that was like 18 minutes after I got off stage. So I'm the genius that, that, that <laughs> contributed to my own demise. Um, but it was cool and it stuck. Last night, people sent us 928 shots on our phone. You know, it, it, it's, it's become part of that heritage and they'll do it forever. It's, it's, it's part of our culture, but we don't abuse it before we go on by any means. Because for me personally, I think I owe it to the people that paid 
sometimes all their cash to come see us, you know? I don't, want, I don't want them going away with a memory. Yeah. This ain't hair metal, bro. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking to the wrong bands. Yeah. We were, all we did, we just pretty much, it's like what we just did on Mayhem, man. Nowadays, my room's a party room. If you want to have a good time, you're in my room. You know, and it generally is 99% female free just because, you know, it's still f dude music, you know. Girls have gotten into it over the years and it's cool. A lot more people like Thrash in the beginning. In the beginning, it was 100% men, yeah. you know. So, we don't have any groupie stories. And it's not because I'm married. My wife would love to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was few and far between. I remember when like, MTV blew up and you'd see these videos of these bands, you know, Skid Row and Bon Jovi and Aerosmith and all that stuff in the 80s and Motley and whoever else, you know, and just seas of women and we'd just be like, why don't they listen to us? I don't understand. What's wrong with what we're doing? Why are we Too so dangerous. scary? Like, you know, we're nice guys. They could come to our show. We'll hang out. But it didn't work. I've never been approached I've never been approached. I'm 99.9% .9 sure I would never do it. If they came to me with a check for twenty million dollars, which is never going to happen, that's a lot of zeros. But you know, I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, if, you know, if I was getting Steven Tyler money, um, I could probably find a way to. I would just be a complete prick if they thought that Simon Cowell guy was was mean. I'd be ten times worse than that guy, and I'd probably get fired a day into it. But as long as I knew I get to keep my money, fine. You wanted me, you got me. You got a point.